Hello everyone, in today's video we will be analyzing the Membari fleet. The Membari are considered one of the oldest younger races in the Babylon 5 universe. According to non-canon sources, the Membari technology is heavily influenced by Vorlon tech. As usual, we will be reviewing their military, technology, ships, and lastly their military strategies. The Membari military makes up one third of their population. Once an individual enters into the warrior caste, their whole life is dominated by the caste. Their rank is based on their achievements as well as their time in the warrior caste. It's common to see an older Membari outrank a seasoned veteran. The Membari training is intense and they train for all aspects of war, from hand to hand combat to space combat. Of course not every Membari warrior focuses on specializing in being a foot soldier. A great amount of them specialize in other areas that the cast needs such as engineers and communications specialists. The Membari fleet is trained to operate smoothly. Their ships and fighters are always in constant training, performing complex maneuvers to keep their soldiers in top condition. The training has been improved throughout the thousand years of warfare that Membari had to face. Their technology is based on advanced control of molecular forces. These forces are built in a range of weak and strong weapons. The ships also contain other kinds of technology, such as magnetic and gravitational tech. For example, Membari ships are able to produce artificial gravity by using a gravitic engine. The Membari cast has an array of different types of weapons they like to use, such as the plasma net, molecular disruptor, and antimatter converter. The plasma net is a mix of plasma and gravitic forces, giving the device the ability to push, pull, or even shove an enemy ship. You could consider this device to be a tractor beam, but sadly this device can only be used in short range. A molecular disruptor is a piece of weaponry that has been in service since the first shadow war. The name of the weapon is exactly what the weapon does. It disrupts the molecular level of an object that fires upon and tears it apart. The antimatter converter is not at the same level as re weaponry, but compared to other younger races antimatter weaponry is unmatched. This weapon locks onto the subatomic particles and causes a powerful explosion. Of course, Mumbai ships are equipped with other kinds of armaments, such as fusion and neutron weaponry. The first vessel on the list is the Tashad Medium Fighter, or also known as the Medium Fighter. At a length of 23 meters, this vessel was deployed shortly after the first Shadow War, but it was reported that some form of this fighter saw action during that war. It's common that younger Mimbari pilots fly the medium fighter first before they're given the honor of the pilot denial. The main issue with this fighter was its maneuverability. It was destroyed in great numbers against the shadow fighter. This vessel has a weaker hull than the Nile and is armed with three light fusion cannons and is defended by polycrystalline armor and a stealth device. A couple of centuries later, the Tishad was replaced by the Nile. The Nile heavy fighter is also known as a Nighthawk to the Earth pilots. This fighter is 22.23 meters in length and is capable of carrying up to one pilot. The Nile is fast, agile, and is heavily armored, able to go up against any younger race fighter. This vessel is equipped with a gravimetric engine and a stealth device, giving the pilot the ability to operate in gravity and also avoiding being locked on by other fighters. Even though the Membari are an advanced race, they are unable to build a fighter that's capable of jumping into hyperspace on its own. This vessel is also armed with three light neutron fusion cannons and is also defended by a polycrystalline armor and a stealth device which was already mentioned. Of course, we can't have fighters without a carrier. The Membari carrier is called the Morshin. The Morshin was designed to deliver fighters from one system to another. It's large enough to carry four squadrons of fighters. Even though the carrier was not designed for combat, it's more than capable of defending itself from attacks. The carrier is 1,200 meters in length and has a gravitic engine and has jump point capabilities. The carrier is armed with seven fusion cannons. It's also defended by polycrystalline armor and a stealth device. The Latera class is the Membari scout ship and is also used as a personal transporter ship as well. At a length of 40 meters, this vessel can only carry up to one pilot and is armed with two neutron guns. Of course, this vessel is defended by polycrystalline armor just like the Membari fighters, but the ship is also reported to have a plasma net and a stealth device. This vessel was used to draw in Membari enemies into a trap, which was shown to us in the Earth Membari War. Before we go over some of the stronger vessels on this list, we have to talk about the Trogan Armored Cruiser. This vessel was somewhat of an experiment and very few of these ships were built. This cruiser was made to disrupt enemy movement, hence the name of the ship. The cruiser was well armored, but was poorly armed for a Membari ship. 
The Latera is not the only smaller vessel in the Membari fleet. The Charutha Assault Frigate is a troop carrier. This vessel rarely saw action. It would wait in hyperspace until the space battle was over. After the battle was won, the frigate would jump out of hyperspace to deliver the troops to the planet to start the land battle. At a length of 500 meters, this vessel required 40 crew members. The frigate was armed with three fusion cannons and two molecular pulsers. The ship is also defended by polycrystalline armor and a stealth device. Of course, the ship also had a gravitic engine and had jump point capabilities as well. During the Earth Membari War, the Membari were impressed by the Nova Dreadnought. One of the factions in the Warrior cast wanted to attempt to reproduce a similar concept on a Membari ship, called the Nishitin Gunship. Even though the ship was powerful, its weapons caused too much stress to its reactor, which forced the Membari to give up on the design. The ships that were built already were destroyed during the Second Shadow War. The vessel was reported to be 1,100 meters in length and can carry a crew of 166 and 3,000 passengers if needed. The vessel has a gravitic engine and has jump point capabilities. The gunship is also armed with 10 neutron laser cannons and 12 fusion cannons. The ship is also defended by polycrystalline armor and a stealth device. The Neshitin gunship was not the only ship that was designed by the Membari that was overpowered and was rarely used. The Tigara attack cruiser was designed for close range combat and was armed with disruptors and antimatter converters, which means that the ship had to be close enough to their enemies to have a huge effect on their armor. During the Earth Membari War, this vessel was never used, since the Charlene long range weapons were more efficient. I was not able to find the exact length of the ship, but I'm assuming this vessel was probably around 850 meters in length, and it was defended by polycrystalline armor and a stealth device. The Membari fleet also had another scout vessel, called the Lashoth Heavy Scout Ship. This vessel was used to protect crucial ships within the fleet. This vessel was 850 meters in length and needed a crew of 83 members. It's also able to carry up to 750 passengers if needed. There's many different specs of this ship, and of course none of them are cannon. I'm going to go with the most simplified version, which was armed with 13 fusion cannons. Of course, this ship was also defended by polycrystalline armor, a stealth device, and six fighters as well. As always, this ship had a gravitic engine and had jump point capabilities as well. The Tenashi class frigate is a modified version of the Tenash Haza class war cruiser, which was in service during the first Shadow War. Very few of these vessels are still in use, and they're used to patrol the Membari border. This vessel is 869 meters in length and is powered by a quantum singularity and a jump engine. The ship is able to carry up to 110 crew members and 800 troops. The frigate is armed with 4 gravitic neutron cannons, 8 fusion beam cannons, 4 electropulse guns, 2 missile launchers, and 1 antimatter cannon. The vessel is also defended by polycrystalline armor, a stealth device, 6 gravitic tractor beam projectors, and a defense grid. Next on the list is the Charlene War Cruiser, probably the most well-known Membari ship on this list. This vessel is the main capital ship in the Membari fleet. This vessel is equipped with the best scanners and it's known to mess up younger races systems when it's set to maximum. This war cruiser is 1,600 meters in length and it has a crew of 600 and it's able to carry 150 troops as well. It's reported to carry up to 8,000 troops if needed. This vessel has a Stalasha Gravimetric engine and a Class A jump engine. It's also armed with 12 fusion lasers, 6 neutron cannons, and an electromagnetic pulse cannon. It's also defended by a disabler and attractor beams, polycrystalline armor, and a Membari stealth system. This cruiser is also capable of carrying 15 fighters as well. There's also a bigger version of this ship, called the Shigarti Battle Cruiser, which is 25% larger than the Charlin. They used the extra space to pack the ship with additional weapons and armor. There's only a few of these ships created, and they're mostly used as flagships within the fleet. Of course, we have to give an honorary mention to the White Star. Even though, in my personal opinion, I don't think the White Star is a part of the Membari fleet. Granted, it's partially made with Membari technology, but it was built for the Rangers to fight the Shadows, and then it was later used by the Interstellar Alliance. Now, let's review the Membari fleet overall. Throughout the Babylon 5 show, we know that the Charlene War Cruiser was the most popular used Membari vessel, and there's many reasons why it was a dominant ship. My own personal opinion is probably due to the ship's strength. It's able to take on older races and younger races ships at the same time. Granted, if it takes both of those ships on, it probably won't be victorious, but it will probably be able to damage both of those ships. The Membari also learned different strategies to use the Charlene more effectively. For example, using fighters and smaller ships to draw in their enemy. 
My only issue is that eventually the other races' technology will improve and they will start to be more of a threat to the Membari. The Membari will have to learn to build more of an array of different kind of ships. Granted, we did go over other vessels within the fleet, but they had so many issues that they were rarely used. The Membari will have to update their fleet, because eventually younger races will start to reach their level of technology. Let me know your opinion about the Membari fleet, and which vessel is your favorite. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, and please follow me on my socials. If you enjoyed this video, then you might enjoy these other two videos displayed on the screen. Thank you for watching Utopian Broadcast, and I'll see you next time on my channel. Thank you.